If you're going to study Mars, Arizona is a good place to be. There's two profound differences between Earth and Mars in terms of atmosphere and weather. One is they have only 1% of the pressure at the surface that we have, and so therefore it's a very thin atmosphere, about the same as at 100,000 feet on the Earth. So you can imagine um, if, if you were on, on Mars unprotected, your blood would boil. So this is not an easy place to live. The second is they do not have deep oceans like the Earth. And the oceans on the Earth have a tremendous influence on our weather. And on Mars, you don't have that. So it's a more uniform type of, of uh, weather system that you would see there. And they don't have much water because, well, there's not much atmosphere in the first place. And it's cold, so it's minus 50 degrees centigrade on the average. So weather is quite different on Mars. You tend to see the skies as being sort of a yellowish brown kind of reddish tone and uh, it's mostly because of the dust. There's so little gas you don't see the blue skies that you see on the earth. There's plenty of clouds though and we see lots of dust devils so it's it's not too different than uh, the Arizona weather. We actually went out and studied them. Of course the the uh, place to study dust devils is Eloy, Arizona where there's just uh, an abundance of them and we you know, rigged up instruments on trucks and drove out into dust devils to measure their properties and uh, it was quite quite exciting. Unfortunately I had to do it in the middle of June so <laughs> it was rather unpleasant too. We have used the um, the uh, dry playas that you see over near, near Wilcox and, and further over towards the New Mexico border. These old dry lakes are quite interesting as, as kind of relics of a a past wet environment that is now dry. So we, we've done some work over there and that's uh, what you find is you have a clay on the surface and clay it turns out is very conducive to life and that's one of the the goals of the Curiosity mission is to find clays from the ancient times on Mars. And the clays in Arizona which of course are much different than on Mars you can actually find tiny shrimp living inside of the clay and all it needs is a little rain and there's tiny little puddles for them and out come the shrimp and down come the sandhill cranes and <laughs> you've got a whole ecosystem around what looks like the most barren place on the planet. So it's, uh, it's kind of telling, you know. You wonder if there's a place on Mars where life is just hidden beneath the surface of, in that way. There's three major centers in Arizona for planetary science. There's of course the U of A and our Lunar and Planetary Lab. There's ASU that has a very strong team of uh, Mars scientists and, and scientists that have worked on many other missions. And then there's the USGS, astrobi uh, I'm sorry, astrogeologists at the um, USGS and Flagstaff. And they had, that's where uh, Gene Shoemaker was in the 60s. So he was like the father of, of that field up there. And they have been involved in many, many, many of the missions uh, and are still experts today in, in analyzing images from all different planetary objects and making maps. So Arizona is without question one of the major centers of planetary research in the country. And we have several missions that are even run from Tucson today. There's uh, HiRISE, which is the camera that's on an orbiter, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, that's sending back the highest resolution pictures ever taken of another planet. A pixel projected onto the surface of Mars about the size of a dinner plate. And they can't possibly image the entire planet because there's no way to send that much data back to the Earth. So even after, what's it been, seven years or something, I think they've got like 2% of the planet imaged. So it would take, uh, what, 50 times that? It's been seven years, so it would take 350 years to actually photograph the whole planet. <laughs> so they have to be careful in their choices of where they take their pictures. And that's how we know where to put Curiosity, is from cameras like High Rise and and some of the other uh, um, cameras, where well, there's one from ASU called Themis that's on Odyssey. And it is uh, more of an um, uh, infrared camera. 
and it tells you the temperatures of the surface. So it's really uh, still operating today also. And you were able to actually see the Phoenix Mars lander with high rise when <laughs> it was landing. While it was going down by parachute, and then on the surface we could see the lander, we could see the parachute where it had landed and the heat shield. It was quite, quite amazing. 